Well, Welcome. hello. <laughs> we're we're back. We're back for another great episode. Here, scoot over so you're more in the middle. There we right. go. Look at the camera. Yeah. Not look, your face. Looking at the camera. There it is. Okay. Professional so. <laughs> YouTubers, look at the camera. Yeah. Uh, so today, before we get started, I thought that I should include Ethan in today's video. So, roll the tape. Here's a video of Ethan polishing off his breakfast really nice for me because I don't have to feed him everything. As you can see, he has not lost any of his appetite, have you, son? No, you're just going after it, huh? You a hungry kid after sleeping in so long? Yeah, you are. And what are we going to eat next? What did we just ask the nurse for? Fruit cups. And maybe we'll also have some banana bread later on today. Is life pretty good? Yeah. Life's pretty good, huh? We make sure that we do what the nurses want, and what do they do? When we do what the nurses want, what do they do? Feed us. <laughs> That's right, they feed us. And sometimes they bring us what? Well, food, and if we really do what they want, they'll bring us a cookie. That's right. We are totally okay with bribery here at UC Davis. Okay, so <laughs> as you can see, Ethan is making up for three weeks of eating. <laughs> yeah, he, for three weeks he got, you know, lipids by IV. And uh, I think is, he's making up for it. He's enjoying his pancakes and his chicken nuggets and all the gluten that his mother has deprived him of over the past months that have made his life miserable. Yeah. And really regretting that one because gluten is not going to solve a tumor problem. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, some mistakes you just make. Yeah. So, Ethan, uh, Ethan has really been in, enjoying the hospital food to say the least. And every time the nurse comes in and he's like, oh, it's time to take my meds, he goes, Cookie? <laughs> Cookie? <laughs> Sorry, it would be softer. Cookie? Cookie? And uh, it's adorable. It's good. Um, so, uh, Steph and I have some news to share uh, with you today. So, I'm going to read this uh, because it's kind of hard to pronounce. So, uh, we got the results back from oncology. And so, Ethan has an anaplastic pleomorphic xanthroatrocytoma so that's a fancy word for uh, a, a really really rare uh, tumor that in, is usually seen in children pediatric tumor like adolescents sometimes young adults it's like less than one percent so based, whoa, 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 oh. no let's get the math right so the chance of having an astrocytoma which is like a star-shaped tumor that kind of wraps around everything is 6.6 .6 in a hundred thousand. So that's 6.6 .6 people would get this tumor out of a hundred thousand people. Uh, the chance of getting this specific uh, malignant tumor is less than 1% of all astrocytomas. So that means that the chance of getting this tumor is less than 6.6 .6 people out of 10 million people. Yeah, I would have really preferred to win the lottery yeah. than, than this, but... Yeah. That's that's kind of the odds that yeah. is it odds or probability? Probability. I think it's probability. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, what does what does all that mean? Um, so Ethan has a, a really bad tumor, a really aggressive tumor that is in such a location that the doctors doctors Weinenberg uh, does not feel comfortable removing any more tumor. Um, and I feel like they took out as much as they could the first time and it didn't go that great. So she knows like we, we shouldn't take more right now. So the, the next plan of attack would be to begin radiation, uh, and see how the tumor responds to that. I think the tentative plan is to take the next, you know, week to 10 days to kind of prepare for radiation. You know, yep. Ethan's still in the hospital prepare for radiation, and then begin his radiation treatment. 
uh, which in the big picture, you know, could take up to six weeks. Um, and it's about, you know, 15 minutes a day plus, you know, the in and out of the hospital and getting it set up. The actual like radiation pieces is, is short. Um, Dr. So Dr. Anthony said today, he's the that, oncologist. yeah, the oncologist, he said that the actual radiation takes like 15 minutes every day. It's really short, but it's going to basically wipe him out for the rest of the day. He's going to be exhausted. So, uh, that's hard. Yeah. But. And that also delays like physical therapy. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of that balance after the radiation would be some sort of like recovery period where maybe we could, uh, focus on physical therapy. Yeah. And then after that would be, well, they're going to, they're also going to be taking several MRIs throughout that time to see how the, how the tumor is responding, get imaging to make sure that, is it shrinking? Is it staying the same? Is it getting bigger? And try and make some, some predictions based off of that. Um, and, you know, if radiation doesn't go well, you know, we can revisit our options. Yeah. You know, we don't have to, if it's horrible and it's making everything worse, you know, we can, we can, we can, we can say we need to find a better option for Ethan. Um, so Ethan's primary concern right now is his missing skull. <laughs> Um, That's a good concern. It's, it's really throwing him off. Um, All right. I, I think it throw me off. I was missing half my Yeah, he, it really throws him off. Um, so all of this is going to determine if and when he gets the cranial plasty, I think is the right term, it's getting the, the bone, brain. Bone back. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's going to be after radiation if we see all that, all that all the way through, and then it's going to probably be after that three to four week period, and it might even be after, you know, it could be up to six months. Um, so that's, it's all just huge. Yeah, we right. don't, we don't really know. Right. So, but it'll be, probably be a while. Uh, so that brings us to what are, what are we going to do? Yeah, what next? <laughs> and I think knowing that Ethan needs to be here, you know, his team of doctors is here and I feel like we have established connection with yeah. them and they are invested into him and his case and the medical care that he's getting here is, and, is wonderful. I don't and, really want to look at seeing if, you know, we can do it at end low or what options are you know, closer to home. I feel like Ethan needs to be here and I want to keep him Yeah, here. close to the hospital. The problem is at the hospital under current COVID regulations, like on the seventh floor where we are, it can only be Ethan and one parent. And it's, it's awkward in how it like, it kind of grates on me because it's, you know, the, the staff is doing their job and I get that, but it, it's hard when it's, our, are you the only parent here right now? And it's just... It, it, it's, it's, it's hard. And, um, you know, rules and regulations are rules and regulations. But ultimately, Ethan needs to see his grandfather. Right. <laughs> and so we are, we are... When your best friend is your papa, you know, we, we need to make that happen. So... Because yeah. in, in, in this battle, there are emotions. And you need to have the grit and the drive... To keep going, right. and if if we lose that emotional battle, then what's the point? What's the point of this? So I think right now we are pursuing the medical treatment we can through the hospital, and we yep. need to find. I think our our plan is to find a short term rental here in Sacramento, you know, close to the hospital, uh, something where we could move, you know, our family down here for the fall, maybe through Christmas. You know, I don't don't really know. It kind of depends on how things go, but for the next couple months at least, um, where, you know, Ethan's grandparents could come and visit and see him, where, you know, Ethan actually can see the people that he loves and that love him. Uh, right now, you know, we're just kind of doing FaceTime with his grandparents and things like that. Which is good, but it's, it's, it's not, not the, the same. same. And, and so I think, you know, Ethan needs to be able to sit in their presence and, and be with them and we need to be a family. And so I think that is, is what we're looking for. So if you know somebody that doesn't need their house for the next 
you know, a couple months or maybe wants to house swap and or live has in... a VRBO in the area. Yeah, you want to live in Smoky Butte Valley. You know, we, we got a lovely 22 square foot home. <laughs> nice Smoky Butte. Yeah. You can't find that anywhere in California. No, it's hard to find. <laughs> hard to find. So, so that's, that's, where... that's kind of where we are. And um, so we're hoping that, you know, through connections with church and through our support group that... Yeah. You know, somebody knows somebody that uh, can find a, a house for us to use that's, you know, safe. And and this, uh, this is where we're, we're especially grateful for all of, all of you who've contributed to the GoFundMe. Uh, it, it has given us so many options. Yeah, because we, we have options and we, we, can we can find something. We can choose for Ethan. And that's, it's so encouraging. And for all the people out there who are donating food and dinner to to our family our, yeah, we feel like we have a, an official gofundme and an unofficial go feed me yeah and i'm really thankful to oma's bunko group <laughs> because you know they're they're bringing meals uh, after all these years of lynn cook i ate your chicken pot pie five days in a row and it's still good <laughs> so we it's just really nice to we kind of have like this joint custody going on so Joey's down here at the hospital the first part of the week, and I'm at home, and then we flip flop on Wednesdays, and and so I feel like we kind of you know pass through, and it's it's nice when I come home after being at the hospital for you know three or four days that it's not like oh I need to go to the grocery store and figure out what's for dinner, or when I'm getting ready to come down here you know today I got to spend time you know with the kids doing what I wanted to do not like meal planning for Joey when he gets home, and so we really appreciate those yeah. meals. And it encourages us to just still sit down and have dinner as a family, which, you know, when, when, when meals aren't brought, it's a lot easier just to make the kids quesadillas and feed them at the counter. Um, so we, we appreciate, um, we appreciate all of that. All and, the support. Uh, mail got a little backed up because of the fires. And so today the mail finally got delivered. And I think there were like five or six cards in the mail today full of encouragement and love and um so that's that's really encouraging too to hear from people that we see on a regular basis and people that you know we haven't seen in years um to know that you are thinking about us and praying for ethan and encouraging us and watching these videos and being a part of this journey yeah it it really means a lot yeah. so that's where we are. This is and a really happy episode, I know. Almost as you know, good as the second, you know, brain yeah. surgery episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were really hoping for better. Better news. We kind of knew it wouldn't be better news, but ugh, it's just kind of a crappy, crappy. Yep. <laughs> That's what it is. But we're going to play the hand we're dealt as best we can. Yep. We're going to walk forward in courage. And uh, walk with Ethan. And what are you going to do? We're going to go forward. Yep. Go forward. Till next time. <laughs>